Hey everybody, Brian Beeler coming to you alongside Kevin O'Brien at the Storage View Lab. We've got another new review. Is this a new review? It seems like I've seen this server in like thousands of times. We have a lot of them. It's a new review of a configuration of a server that's old. How about that? Yeah, it works. Okay. So the R740 is the 2U workhorse sort of mainstream linchpin of the PowerEdge server line. We've seen them, of course, individually come in for review. We've got a dozen of the... Uh, it's 13, first, actually. 13, sorry. Yeah. What about that one? Um, 14, 15, somewhere 15. on there. So we have up to 15 of these in the lab right now. And the core group of 12 or 13 have been the low-gen servers for all of our testing since the end of 2017. Yeah, we do a lot with them. And uh, so the server is old, so you might be asking, well, why are you doing a video review of it now? Well, things have changed. Uh, these support the latest gen Intel CPUs, so this has 8280s in it, and they also now support more NVMe drives. Our first review of the system had just four, right? Yeah. So this one's got 12, and so we'll walk through some of that and, and show you what we've done with this configuration and what the performance profile looks like. But they do support up to 24 NVMe drives now in this chassis. Yeah, they, they get a little particular about very specific backplane options they get. So 4, 12, or 24 NVMe drives and a lot of different things in between. Well, let's take a look at the hardware specifically. And the system we have on the, uh, on the desk today, this is the one we reviewed, or one like the one we reviewed more accurately. Uh, this doesn't have the DRAM in it. Uh, but it does have... In the back, you can see the three cards. We can see two of them at the top that are in the PCIe slots. So why don't you talk a little bit about the architecture? Yeah, so uh, Dell's taking the approach where they're using edge cards to uh, break out the PCIe lanes to the uh, front back plane. And uh, in that, we have uh, three cards serving 12 drives. And um, it's kind of a mishmash. Uh, it's not the most elegant, but it's probably the most versatile because there's other solutions that uh, come into play where um, you might be limited based on the connections in the motherboard or a you have a custom built server for a very specific use case. This is something, this is a chassis that Dell's had to make relatively few changes and you can have models that have like three and a half inch hard drives inside the thing or in this case NVMe on the front side. So it there it's it might not be as elegant as others, but it definitely has the most options. So when we look at uh, the review for a second, we've got a graphic up there now that highlights that architecture in a visual way. So Yes, yeah, so you'll have the spread of uh, some drives uh, balanced on the first CPU and the second CPU, and it gives you a nice mix of... Um, uh, where the workloads will be contained. So I'm guessing when you went to the uh, the process of reviewing this system that you read the manual and you put no. all the SSDs in the right slots. Well, considering I used all 12 slots, I didn't really have to worry about balancing. It was just all of them. But it was a guess of which 12 slots, right? Well, so on the uh, the four <laughs> slot one, all the NVMe bays were on the far right. So I just went from the far right and just made my way over. Okay. Number 13, uh, the number 11 slot did not work, and that's where I realized we had a 12 drive backplane. So there are, as Kevin says, a number of unique configurations for the server. And in fact, that makes it somewhat frustrating when you look at the configurator on Dell's site because there are at least 16, it seems like, different initial choices in, in drive bay mix. And then it's um, understanding the PCI slots that you've got to give up for the NVMe drives. Then do you want GPUs? Then do you want the back bays? There's yeah, a lot not, going on. So this, uh, compared to where we've seen other vendors take it, where um, you could actually, as the end user, add NVMe support into the chassis. This one, uh, Dell is a little bit more particular, I think, on if you want those options in there, you better get them, get them from the, the factory. Beginning. Yeah. And so when we think about what goes on in a power edge, and you know, we're talking a lot about the NVMe, and we'll get to the performance here in just a minute. One of the other things that's important too is manageability, and Dell has iDRAC for yeah. that. They've got a lifecycle controller manager. They've got a number of tools. Uh, this one's actually configured with the mobile uh, pairing deal. Yeah, they have a lot of options where uh, you go into a data center, and uh, sometimes you maybe you want to figure out the IP address from the front, and you can like use the little control panel, or you can use OpenManage Mobile and start deploying right. this from a uh, mobile phone. So you can get its entire deployment configuration running with just your phone from a little web page. Or actually, um, 
when it presents uh, for Open Manage mo uh, Mobile, you have a Wi-Fi uh, hotspot that pops up from the server, and you can use a notebook or a, uh, a phone, and it's it's pretty cool. It is cool, yeah. There's a little button on the front. You press that guy, you have it pair with your, your app that you have open, and yeah. now you're deploying or managing or seeing visibility into the server as you physically walk the uh, data center, which is which is nice, and Dell has consistently been pretty far ahead of the game, I would say, in terms of manageability apps, all that sort of software stuff. Yeah, and there's, stuff. I mean, you have to give it to them where, when you look at a, uh, like a multi-tenant data center, you might not always want a uh, network that someone patches their notebook into right. and has visibility into other systems. This is a way where someone can manage their own individual system down to, without it requiring a crash cart, and the only thing you have access to is the server itself. Right. So we're taking a look now at iDRAC. You've logged into another one of uh, these 740 XDs that does support the 12 NVMe bays. What do we have going on with that Pac-Man action there? Yeah, so there's uh, one drive that is uh, online. That's the uh, little SATA SSD boot drive. And then we have eight NVMe drives installed. They're showing as ready. But you get the visibility into the... Um, the slots that are occupied, the devices that are in there, and other information depending on the integration level to uh, the Dell system. Scroll down that summary of slots a little bit. I want to see what you got going on in there. Yeah. Oh, those look like uh, officially sanctioned drives, huh? Yeah, sometimes uh, you'll get to see that it is a PCI drive, but you don't get to all the information. <laughs> you, you don't get all the information. You don't have any of the information. Yeah, so it just depends on the... Uh, uh, the drive, but in this case, you still get to see which slots are occupied and uh, which are flagged. In this case, it doesn't really know the status of good or bad; it just knows the product is installed. All right. Well, that's okay because uh, yeah, this is for a, a research project anyway, so that's less important. Uh, so let's take a look at performance. Let's flip back over to the review and and work through some of that. And on these charts, let let's start off with the config on this one was. Uh, Two Intel 8280s, so yeah. we've got a good CPU in there. What about RAM and two storage? Two CPUs. We've got two CPUs that are good in there. What about RAM and storage footprint? What are so we testing? we have, uh, there are 12 uh, 32 gig, 2933 uh, megahertz uh, DDR4 uh, DIMMs. So it gives us uh, 384 gigs of RAM. And then we have uh, the twin 8280s. And on the uh, storage side, we're using... Um, uh, for our review, we had uh, 12 of the uh, Seagate, or the Micron 9300 right. uh, 3.84 terabyte uh, okay. NVMe drives. Um, so for our uh, SQL test, we did um, uh, four VMs, and this is an area where our test maxes out at uh, one, uh, one millisecond. So in this case, both the um, previous model we tested with uh, four NVMe drives, and then this with eight NVMe drives, both testing four uh, VMs, both max out one millisecond. So it's an area where um, additional VMs could be supported, but in, the, our, in this particular application workload, we kind of maxed it out. Okay. Next, when we go to uh, Sysbench, this is another area where both of these drives between uh, eight VMs, one on four, one on eight, they both got maxed out with the CPU. So it was more of the CPU holding it back than the uh, memory, or uh, than the, uh, uh, the storage installed. Um, and that does bring up an interesting point, is when you have a sufficient a number of quality NVMe drives in a system, adding more gives you more capacity, obviously, but you have to balance that with the actual usability of being yeah, able to take advantage of all of those. I think there's certain advantages where NVMe is be, uh, coming lower in price. You have more options. You have QLC, you have TLC, and then you have different variations of like, do you want one drive write per day, multiple drive writes per day? Or even less now because some of the low cost NVMe is at like SATA price points. Yeah, and there's there are some advantages where if you had a... Um, uh, a lot of uh, SAS drives, yes, you could put more in there and uh, write them together, but your your limitation then is the rate card. Well, talk about that for a second, because with the NVMe drives in the system, how do you address those since you're not going through a rate card? So NVMe, you, uh, most of the uh, storage you're going to be doing either um, JBOD and each individually addressed, or you're going to have an implementation where you're using software rates. So that could be something like... Uh, a vSAN platform that's uh, seeing those disks, mm -hmm. or you could have something where you have uh, Windows storage spaces and using it for uh, parity or uh, mirroring. 
So it's more soft a raid for NVMe, but they've gotten fast enough where there's not really a raid card that can that's faster Keep than up. the drives in Accurate. Yeah, and it's an interesting point too, because the R740 XD and for its part the R640 are pretty much the two servers that Dell uses that underpin their whole SDS line. Yeah. The AX nodes now on the uh, on the Windows or the Microsoft Azure Stack HCI, the Ready nodes, the Rail nodes, the Nutanix nodes. I mean, they're all using these things. Well, it's showing it's a very versatile server. It is versatile indeed. All right, so let's get back to the performance. Let's finish up the view there. Yeah, so this is where it gets pretty fun. With 12 NVMe drives, we maxed out at uh, a little almost bit over... 6 million IOS? Yeah, almost 6 million IOS, 4K random read on random write. Uh, we came in at like 2.6, 2.7 million IOPS. And this is an area where faster drives or more write performance drives could yield different results. Now, what's really fun is the bandwidth. You're looking at uh, just north of 40 gigabytes a second. Not gigabits, but gigabytes. <laughs> so co comparatively speaking, how does that line up with other servers or configurations that you've looked at? So I think a lot of them come down to uh, what the performance of the drives you have installed right. is. And really, um, you might see higher performance from another server that maybe has access to higher performance drives or maybe additional drives. Or persistent memory, perhaps. Yeah. But a lot of these things come down more to... Um, as long as the CPU is fast enough, what drives are installed. Right, and this is not a fancy, super fancy configuration. Yes, it has high-end CPUs and a yeah. decent RAM footprint, but these drives are, um, they're not specialized, they're not... No, these, I think, were just uh, three drive right per day um, NVMe Standard products. Standard mixed use kind of thing. Yeah. That aren't even brand new either. That no. They've been around a little bit. Yeah, so sequential write, we got in a little bit short, uh, south of uh, 15 gigabytes a second. But, I mean, this thing... You look at all the benchmarks, it's able to fully saturate the CPUs uh, depending on the workload. And you st even though we are consuming some of the PCI slots, we still have, uh, well, I think it's three left available inside of it. Mm -hmm. So there's still a lot of uh, use that you can get out of this. And you can put in, uh, there's still room for maybe um, some 50 gigabit, maybe some fiber channel, maybe 100 gig Because there is uh, one uh, card on that uh, in the bottom that has... Um, to uh, 25 gig uh, Ethernet port, so there's a lot of connectivity on this. So it's not you're just not limited to a ton of potential inside the server. You still have room to get that to out. Okay. Yeah. Any other performance highlights you want to bring up? No, I mean it's it's just really fast across the board in all get of our, into the application. Yeah, it, a lot of this. I mean, you're looking at. Um, <laughs> north of 2 million IOPS at uh, like less than 150 microseconds of latency. So you're you're in pretty good shape using this uh, particular platform uh, leveraging NVMe storage. As this thing sits across the desk too, I can't help but be fixated by those cables. It looks like that um, that sour candy that come in the bag, those ripple, sour ripple things. I have not tasted the cables, but... I was going to ask if you had licked them yet. No, I try not to. see if they have soury goodness. No, but again, the, the cabling design, even though there are some different, el more elegant solutions, they have done a good job at keeping them fairly uh, level in the uh, airflow field. And it's... you. You can see them when you're looking from above, but from a... because uh, I keep thinking about candy. I can't stop looking at them. I mean, you could taste one right now if you want to, but uh, <laughs> that's on you. All right. So overall, the uh, we, we gave the R740 XD an editor's choice back in 2017 when we saw it the first time. And while the platform remains extremely flexible and has all the software advantages and and now more NVMe support, and it's making a lot of progress. I mean, we, we still really like it. So there's there's nothing there to hold us back from continuing to recommend the R740 XD. Yes, as Kevin says, you give up some PCIe slots, and, and it's kind of, I don't know that it's really Dell's fault. Like, they've done a good job engineering around what they've been given. By now, we all expected to have another generation of Intel CPUs out there. Yeah, and this generation of uh, Intel CPU doesn't have unlimited PCIe lanes. So if you have them, let's say, dedicated an onboard motherboard uh, connection, you're going to give up uh, what's available to the backplane for a PCIe slot. So it's, you have so your PCI lanes going somewhere. You have to use them. It'll be interesting to see then what the R750 XD looks like. I bet it looks like it has NVMe support throughout and no PCIe cards. That's my guess. Oh, we'll see. We will see. Thanks for tuning in.